logarithms are something that do cause some students some problems. I think just because of the notation. The notation looks really weird. Now, logarithms and exponents are actually very closely related. So I'm going to start by just showing you the notation and just show you sort of how a logarithm is related to exponents. So I'm going to write to you in general how it works. here. So the notation goes log, has a little a here like this, a little subscript here. And then it goes b equals x. That's normally how we would write something. And that is actually the same thing as, so these two are actually the same thing. So this is the same thing as saying a to the power of x equals b. These are actually equivalent statements, these right here. So this, this is what's really important, I think. Actually, I'm going to make that a different color. Um, let's say we make that something big and red or something like that. So what do we mean by a logarithm? I mean, logarithm is related to exponents. We can often use that in uh, crazy graphs, for example. If we have a graph of something that doesn't seem to change much or that changes a lot, we can actually do a logarithmic graph. We do this a lot in astronomy, for example. Um, but I mean, anyway, the, you can take a look at those. But, but what I wanted to show you for now is just the, the notation. So what we do is we write this, and this right here, this value right here, that's called the base. So we normally say log base a of b equals x. That's how we write it. It's the same thing as saying a to the x equals b. So the little trick I like to remember is I always start here, and I go here to the this equals this. So I sort of imagine whenever I do these things, if I want to rewrite something in log form, in exponent form, I always say, all right, start with the base, go this to the power of this equals this. So this to the this equals this. That's sort of how I like to remember it. A to the x equals b. So sort of go around in a little mini circle. And here's a key fact here. If the base is not written, sometimes they don't tell you what the base is. So if the base is not written, that means it is 10. So for example, um, let's say I do something like log of 10. What that really means is, or actually instead of 10, let's say log of, I don't know, 100, let's say. That's maybe, or 1,000. Yeah, we'll leave it like this. Let's say we do log of 1,000. Well, what this really means, this is like saying, there's like a little stealth 10 here. That means, what this really tells you, because you can actually figure this out. If you write this as an exponent, then I think it's easier to solve. Because you might want to know, what's the log of 1,000? That may not be so obvious that it's 3. But here's how you do it. You say log base 10. Well, then this is like saying, you know, you don't know what this is equal. So this is like saying equals, you know, x. You don't know what this is. So you can rewrite it then as an exponent. You can say 10 to the power of x equals 1,000. You can say that. Okay, that's because we go sort of this to the this equals this. Because of that, then, you can say, well, fine, then. Um, I can write 1,000 as a power of 10. So 1,000 is the same thing as saying 10 to the power of 3. And now I can use my rules of exponents. If I have the same base, if I have a base to the power of x equals the same base to the power of 3, then x equals 3. Well, in this case, you maybe not say x, then. You maybe just say, so, you can say log of 1,000 equals 3. That's sort of, you don't necessarily have to say x because if you invented an x, you probably shouldn't use it. I mean, I sort of, I invented an x there just to help me to solve it. This is how you can deal with it. Okay, let's do another example. Let's say we do log of, yeah, we can say this. We can just rewrite this equation. So log base 10 of, let's say, 100 equals 2. And let's see if that's really a correct statement. That should be the same or equivalent statement to 10 to the power of 2 equals 100. And you see how that is actually the same thing. So 10 to the power of 2 is like 10 times 10. So that's 100. So just showing you that this is the same thing as this. I probably should have shown you this before this example because this is more complicated than this, I think. So this is just showing you the notations. When you see a log, even if it's not written, 
So if you just said log of 100, you would know that that equals 2, and that's because 10 to the power of 2 is the thing that equals 100. That's how we can deal with logs. Now, um, we can go a little bit further too, so we can say some other things like this. We can actually say, um, Oops, actually, I think I already gave you this. This was the exact thing I was trying to solve for. Um, so I guess the example I gave you, well, that was almost too easy here. Let's actually maybe change this and then make it like this. There we go. We'll add an extra zero here. So if that was the case, then log of 10,000 equals x. How do we actually solve that? Well, I think it's important to make it a um, an exponential equation. I think it's a lot easier to look at. So because it's not written, then we know it's a log base 10. So that means I know that 10 to the power of x equals 10,000. All right, and then I have to rewrite. I want to try to solve, so I need to have the same base. So this is 10, this is 10,000. That doesn't work. But if I can write, rewrite 10,000 as a power, and 10,000 is the same thing as 10 to the power of 5, because there's five zeros. Whoops, four zeros, I mean. That looks like four to me. Yep, there we go. One, two, three, four zeros. So because 10 to the x equals 10 to the 4, same base, so that means x equals 4. I think you get the idea then with these. But you can do log of all sorts of weird things. Okay, so this is really how you can do it. Um, we can do another example. Solve for x. And this one looks way more complicated now. So this one here is solve for x. So log base 2 of x minus 1 equals 4. And that one looks totally crazy. But again, just make it an exponential equation. So this to the this equals this. So 2 to the 4 equals x minus 1. That's really what we're doing. This to the this equals this. Well, then what's 2 to the 4? Well, that's 2 times 2, which is a, uh, 4, sorry. So 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2, that's 8. And times 2 more, that's 16. So 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So 16 equals x minus 1. Well, and how do I find what x is? Well, I can just guess, or I could use algebra and just move my minus 1 over. It becomes a plus 1. So 17 equals x. Therefore, x is 17. So I don't think that was quite so obvious, you know, unless you're really looking carefully for it. And just to show you again then on your calculator, you can see this one here. That If you say log of, I don't know, 2, let's say, what this tells you is 10 to the power of what equals 2? It should be this. Let's try it. So 10 to the power of this answer. That should be 2. That's because, remember, if you don't see the number, so on your calculator, for example, it's usually done with a log, and it doesn't specify it. So in other words, they're doing log base 10. So if I want the log of, I don't know, yeah, 1,000, like we did before. What this tells you is 10 to the power of what is 1,000? That should be 3. I guess 10 to the 3 is 1,000. So that's how you can sort of show this example that we just did before here. So you can also, of course, do that on your calculator. But I just want to show you that you can do it without a calculator. Whoops, that was this example here. So that, I mean, you can easily do it without a calculator as well. But log of 1,000, that was equal to 3. So what we can do then is take a look at this and say, well, 10 to the x and log, they undo each other, which is actually really cool. So what this means then is, take a look at um, your calculator, actually. If you have a TI-83 or 84 or an Inspire, I think they also use the same buttons for those. I'm not sure about the Inspire, though, but the 83 and the 84 for sure do this. Look at the button for log and look at the button for 10 to the power of x. Do you notice they're sort of on the same key here? You just have to do second for that. So logs and 10 to the x undo each other. I love this because, look, natural log and e to the x also undo each other. We're going to see those later x squared and square root of x also undo each other. Now, not everything works this way, but sine and inverse sine undo each other, and cos inverse cos, and tan inverse tan. So it's nice you have a few things here that sort of help you to remember. What this really tells you is, let's say you're in the middle of an equation and you're trying to get rid of a 10 to the x, take the log of it. Or if you're trying to get rid of a log, take 10 to the power of that thing. So here's the rule here. So let's say you have log of... Yeah, actually, let's say we do it like this. Let's say we have a situation where we have 10 to the power of x. And I want to get rid of that. I want to you know, get rid of the 10 to the power of and just solve for x. And I take a log of that. Because that turns out log and 10 to the x undo each other, so you get just x. 
Just like if you had something like you wanted to get rid of a log. Let's say you had log x and you wanted to try to solve for x. Like, oh, how do I get x on its own? What's the inverse of a log? It's 10 to the power of. That means take 10 to the power of that thing and 10 to the power of log, it's like they undo each other so you just get x. So I'm just trying to show you that log of 10 to the power of something gets rid of and 10 to the power of log gets rid of themselves. So you're just left with this thing. I think that's actually really, really nice to look at. Also, um, the graphs are inverses of each other. That turns out that's why they undo each other. So if you took a look on a graphing calculator, or if I could just sketch it maybe, um, it turns out the graph of log and 10 to the x are inverses. So in other words, if I graph, let's say, um, let's say I graphed um, 10 to the x, that goes something like this. Well then if I do an inverse, remember drawing an inverse means you actually uh, draw a line y equals x, so that'll be like a mirror. So this will here, this will be the equation y equals 10 to the x. Well it turns out if you use this, where this right here, by the way, this is supposed to be asymptotic here, I need to be careful. This one goes sort of infinitely close to the axis here. It doesn't go back up. It starts off sort of really, really close and goes near, or goes up. This is an exponential equation, right? It goes up really, really steep. Well, how does the log look? It's the inverse, which means if I want to do an inverse, that means that this is like this is a mirror. So the same distance from here is this point here. The same distance from here is that point there. The same distance from here is that point, um, let's say that would be here. So something like this. I'm not very good at drawing these, but something like this. This would be y equals log of x. So a graph of a log and graph of 10 to the x, they're actually inverses of each other. It means you can draw this and they're like mirror images.